Easy E, how are we? Sean E. <laughs> oh, I sense the nervousness in the voice as you record this. It's Wednesday night. We are a few nights away, little, little over 72 hours away from the big one, the biggest race of the year, the biggest race of the last three years. It is, of course, the Dublin City Martin on this Sunday, October 30th. I'm excited. As you can tell from my voice, I am excited. I am good to go, but the problem with being too good, good to go and too excited is I lose the run of myself, I do something silly, which is why I had to remind myself and you guys listening of what I wrote. I ended up being in 2019, my top 10 uh, Martin tips. Um, Eric, before we get into that, how, how are you feeling before Sunday? Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look, I just, I went out with one of the lads here tonight. Um, I've been on the treadmill for the week. Uh, I was sticking that like... I'm really struggling for the first 5k of settling in. So my way of counteracting that was run faster for the first 5k. Um, so I, on the treadmill this week, I ran kind of a weird interval kind of session. I ran at the 5.30 for the first 5k, then went to 4.30 for 25 minutes or so or 30 minutes and then slowed it down to 5.30, then went to a 4.20. And at that point, it was either get off or drop. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the next night, it was five-minute kilometers, and I just stuck at that for 45 minutes um, and sped it up to a 4.10 for the last five minutes. A 4.10? Yeah, yeah, just oh. to kind of go. It was more, do you know what? I was getting soft, Sean. I was like, no, you're done. And then I said, oh, are you? And then I upped the speed. And then I was like, no, you're done. And every time I told myself I was done, I upped the speed. So eventually, I just said, right, just enjoy this now. And you're I, stopping I, at 45 minutes. How nervous are you now that you might push too much in this week before Sunday? Or do you feel like you haven't got the, and I'm not being smart here, that the volume of training to be sore come Sunday? Because just yeah, like, nah, you listen, nah. you, you've been training last. Now, you did a, the, the, the cycle from Maz, Mizzen to Maddenhead back in September. Yeah. So a lot of stuff on your bike. But in terms of leg stuff, it's only been the last five, six weeks. So um, taping yeah. was out of the question for you. So you're going hard this week. Yeah, so it, look, it's and then we missed a week last week. Uh, I didn't get any training in last week, so you know the five weeks turned to four weeks, turned to three and a half weeks. You know, like it's oh, okay. So, um, in terms of how I'm feeling, like under pressure, like mentally, okay. like um, like doing the eight nine k at a five minute pace, and maybe it's just a treadmill. Maybe it is just the treadmill. But it's boring on a treadmill. It's hard to it keep is. pushing yourself then, going like, that way. Yeah, there was a moment. Like, honestly, it felt like three three and a half minutes passed by i don't know what i was thinking about i looked down 20 seconds past i was like what the <laughs> and i genuinely like it was it was the it was the weirdest moment i've ever had in the treadmill i and i mean it i it genuinely felt like three and a half minutes and i looked down and it was only 20 seconds and it was an absolute mind fucking up i was like what is going on so it had to be a ball breaker yeah but then i went out with one of the lads here tonight he is aiming for a three hour in dublin Oh. Sub three hour, and he was going for an easy 10k, right? And to me, it wasn't easy. But, um, we started his, at he I was, was gonna say his easy was easy, been what 510, 515 pace for what he wants, so would it be even slower or faster? Yeah. We started at a 450. Oh, um, so <laughs> we started at a 450, it went down to a 430, we ended up at a 425. Up a hill, three and a half k at a four fifteen, and I was like, "Right, listen, bud, you tip on there. I know where I am now. I'll see you at home." He's like, "I'll come back to you." As he left me, Matt Carroll, <laughs> he dropped to a three fifty, and off he went. And uh, I just seen it. He just disappeared into the night. I was like, Whoosh. and I wasn't going. All I slowed, I slowed back down to a four forty five. Like, I didn't go to a five minute. I, I yeah. made a deal. I made the deal. It wasn't going above five. So I slowed down to a 4.45. And I just felt like I was going backwards, just watching them cruise off into the distance. And I was having that thought. I was like, so that's the difference between the three hour and the four hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to make people feel, feel a little bit better now that they're listening to this on a Thursday, Friday going, oh my God, I've done nothing at all. I've done very little. I, I've done, I'm a study in contrast to you. I, I did a 4K today because after the... I did a 20K on Sunday and my body was like, okay, pal, it's it's time to pull back. It's time to, you know, you're feeling a little bit stiff and a little bit more stiff and sore than I would, normally would in a 20K. I was like, I was afraid that I get that 20K, I feel like I could could have done a lot more, but I was like, you know what? Let's just pull back this week. So um, like very light strength work. I get, I get, not light, but I get two sets in of something today. 
And then it's like, okay, instead of doing four sets, something it's just two sets. It's just to switch on a bit, a bit more mobility stuff, a lot of single leg stuff, and then a light run. I might go for a light run now on, on Thursday morning, and, and that'd be pretty much it now, apart from you know some exercise in the gym and not much. It's pretty much a, a rest week. So hopefully come, come Sunday, I'm, I'm like that, I'm just raring to go go from there. But yeah, for me, study in contrast. <laughs> it is, it is a big contrast, and yeah, don't don't get a fear if, if you're thinking like <laughs> I've done nothing, I have done nothing, and now I'm trying to catch up. Um, but don't you know want there was confidence to be built out of oh. because a four twenty for an average of I think it was an average of four twenty seven or something like that. My watch died through the last two k, and uh, Matt thought you had me solid. I looked at my watch and I brought it back down to a four twenty five and was feeling comfortable. Nice. And my watch died. And I was like, my watch just died. I did the whole beep of death. And I was Doesn't like, count. you're just going to have to call out the pace for me. And he was like, Grand, I go in front. So, and the pace didn't change. He was like, you're at a 450 there down the hill. And I was like, you lying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I noticed, he was like, Asher, we'll just pick it up now for the last little bit. We went down to a 417 or something. And it got harder. And I was like, 450, my whole... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so it's it was it was nice to reach the to go to that element of pain and then to take it back a bit to go from a four fifteen and slow down to a four fifty and the heart rate just come down and down and down. It adds confidence to be like, well, what will I do at five thirty? Do you know? And if I get if it starts rising, slow it down to a five fifty for a kilometer or two, and then pick it back up again. You know, like it's there's confidence to be gained over, but it's a long way. I don't know what shape I'll be in through thirty k, but. We'll see. We yeah. will see. Hopefully, hopefully. On that note, guys, we're going to hit the intro music for this week's episode of the Any Given Run Day podcast. Let's go. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of nervous because I had a very, very quick scan through this. And I'm like, I, I have no idea if it's going to be like all 10 tips be like, actually, Sean of 2019, you make a lot of sense. Or Sean of 2019, you were an idiot. Because I wrote these before I got my first sub four. Like, so um, I had the knowledge up here. I just wasn't doing it on the day or in the feed. So we'll see how we go in this one. Uh, some of them might cross over with the stuff we talked about on Sunday. And um, if it does in terms of nutrition, we won't go any more detail in that just because we, we kind of hit that on, on carb load and everything else from there so tip number one was as i scroll down um oh take in the pre-race atmosphere of the expo so pretty much i talked about you've done the hard work for the event and you know you're, you're, you're good to go for sunday that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the expo but at the same time um don't have too much of the jellies and the sweets and stuff that happens in there. I think I've told this story in the podcast, but one year I just had too much of the chocolates and the gels and I was bouncing off the walls like so much that I went to like, I remember going to Tesco's that afternoon and just standing in the aisle for like an hour. And I was like literally an hour before I decided I'm getting Halloween decorations. And I got like a ton of <laughs> Halloween decorations and stuff for the night out on the Sunday night. So I, I had a ton of like, like random stuff. I just blow up skeleton for an ice bucket and all the rest. Like it just crazy things just because I got back to the apartment and no one was there and I had to do something. So I, I was, I was buzzing. Like I was just like, cause all the, there's jellies and the sweets and there's all so many different sample things you have. You can kind of get lost in that. But at the same time, when you get to the expo, it is a great atmosphere. Everyone is buzzing. Like they call it the friendly marketing for a reason. And it kind of starts there. The atmosphere starts to build and everyone's getting excited and stuff. So do take that time to, to, to take it in. What's your experience doing the expo? The expo, you've paid for your ticket. You've paid for the experience. Go on and enjoy it. Um, again, everyone's going to be trying to sell you to be all sorts of deals and gels and jellies and stuff. Um, you know, stick to what you know, tread carefully, pick up one or two as a trial. Uh, you've, you've paid for the freebies, but like that, you know, tread carefully on them as well. But um, there's cool things there as well. You can put your name on a wall. You can see what the t-shirt's like, the medal's like. You can sign up to have uh, times printed on medals. It, it is cool. It's cool then to be surrounded by running, running shops. There's there's other races that you'll just get, like the Galway Marathon, Cork Marathon, and try and get you to sign up there and then. So, Oh no, it is fun. It is cool, and it's good to get a look around at everyone else dressed all sporty, and then you're eyeing each other up like, yeah, "What are you going to do? Four hour margin, is it?" Um, so, so don't wear the jeans, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you want to be cold for walking around a day for for a marathon or two days, whatever it is. Number two is an interesting one. Uh, just based off that is is just basically wear clothes and runners you're used to running in. So you you could be tempted by you know different gear and different type types of gear, whatever on 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 the in the expo, be like, ah, I'll pick that up. 
and I'll feel good in it. But sometimes if you're wearing, you know, new runners or new socks or or a different t-shirt doesn't quite agree with you, um, it might feel uncomfortable that first time wearing that gear. I know saying this, you did this the first year, didn't you? Because <laughs> I was probably thinking of you yeah. for this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again this year. <laughs> we're already on number two. Or we're, we're saying yeah. something that one of us isn't gonna stick to. <laughs> listen, listen. I bought two pairs of Nikes. Mm. One of them, I kept just forgetting to put in the car, and I'd always end up with the other pair. So I know I can do thirty k in one pair. Right. And I've done sixteen k in the other. And I'm gonna wear the one I did, and and that was just two eight k's. It wasn't. Oh my it. god! What are you doing? I know, I'm gonna do it. Sure, is that it has the old carbon plate in it, so I want to. Oh, okay. It's fucking mint. Um, it's not. It's not Alpha Flyers or Baby Flyers. I think. It, oh, I, I forget the name. I'll, I'll look it up here as you go into the next point. But, um, I I, I don't really. I'm, I'm not going fast enough to really. I think benefit from it, but. From the reading into it and chatting to a few people, it, it might take an extra little bit of sting out of the legs. It might add a little bit of response into each step, which when the legs get heavy, just might help me get a little bit further before I end up in the pain cage. So I'll do another AK tomorrow and they should be well broken in at that stage. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I, the first time we used it, the, the, the carbon kind of plates was during a 5K race myself. Now, not a Martin, but I'll be wearing them again, again on, on, on this Sunday. The third one really hits home for myself and Eric. Um, it's run on your own or in brackets run with with designated pacers on this one um, didn't recommend running with a partner for some reason I think Eric can know a little bit more why uh, pretty much you mess up each other's paces especially if you're not experienced in a marathon if you're first marathon you've got a time and they've got a time and you're not used to when it gets to those longer distances of running with each other like even if one needs a bathroom break you're going to disrupt the, the flow of someone else running um, it seems like a good idea running with, with a partner but if you've got if you're both competitive for a specific time um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Have you changed your opinion on that since our disastrous first one where we almost killed each other? Well, my last two outings in, in races have been with Aussie. One's a half marathon and one was uh, the marathon mm. uh, when I got my best time. And both times I was like, Oz said, I'm going to tip on here and good luck and you just do you and then five minutes later he's like, well, boy, my story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, do you know what? I'm starting to think it's a tactic. I'm starting to think he talks to me so much that I'll be out of breath and then I just flunk and then he keeps going because he's well used to it. You know, like he's there. Uh, <laughs> he's so, he's making you weak. Again. Ozzy's doing it again. He's going at the same pace. So I'm going to show up to the start line and say, look, best of luck and we'll see what happens. And he, 500 metres away, is going to be like, ah, lol, it's that story. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose if you have that kind of like, that... That, that friendship was somewhere where, you know, during the race, you you feel good enough to say, hey, I'm going too slow or, hey, I'm going too fast. I'm going to tip on and go there as opposed to a commitment of we're starting this race together, we're finishing this race together no yeah. matter what. And I suppose that kind of commitment can cause issues. Yeah, no, in fairness, um, the, the time we did it, I went for the water stop and someone jammed on the brakes in front of me <sighs> and I jammed on the brakes and that's when the hammy went and right. I tried to keep up with Ozzy. And then the other hammy went, and then I was running like Forrest Gump with the braces <laughs> on. So uh, the four the four thirty pace turned into a five fifty fairly quickly, and he just drifted off, and I just gave him the wave as he turned around, and he just tipped on. Oh, so right. we do have that one. And in fairness, we're comfortable with each other. Whereas I kind of say, I just let him know. I was like, uh, I wasn't going to close the door on the cage here for a few minutes. <laughs> You see how we go, and yeah, he tops off now. Ozzy likes to go to the toilet during the marathon as well, so he'll nip off every so often for a toilet break, which gives me a few minutes of talking break so I can actually refocus as well. So we tend to have it worked out. He doesn't go to the toilet much after the halfway point, though, and then I'm locked in with him, you know. So, um, but it, it, it has worked for us whether we do it again this year or not. We'll, yeah. we'll see at the start line, but we go as far as we can. We did 30k together, you know, like it's sure what's another 12, you know. Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head with that That kind of... Uh, there'd be a certain point in the marathon work you kind of hit that, that kind of place. Uh, that other person keeps chatting the ear off you and they don't realise, like, okay, this person needs just a couple of minutes of just in the zone, just keep trotting along rather than just hearing whatever they're hearing. Like, that That, that, could, that could be when someone snaps when you're really struggling maybe with a hill or you, you just before you hit your second wind or, you know, you're waiting for something to kick in and you just... The head's down. You're like, I just got to get through this part of the race. And um, if someone else is just distracting you and talking the head off you, it, it's going to make it a lot harder. But if they're if they're experienced with running with you, they might go, okay, 
that person just needs a couple of minutes and was going to be in my own little world and all of a sudden they're back in it from there and away they go. A uh, top tip for me on that one is whether you know people or not, you're going to find yourself jostling for a position with the same 50-ish mm. people. After a certain point in time, you'll recognize the same shorts, you'll recognize the same shoes, you'll recognize the same bag, you'll recognize everything. Um, when I do struggle, um, I'll actually just drift off behind Ozzy. Not that I've fallen off, but right. sometimes it's better to just stare at the feet and just follow his pace. Do you know, stop thinking and just zone off. You can do that with anyone. Find someone who's matching you. You've kind of know you're you're hanging on there, and just just switch off the brain, just follow their feet. Because what you'll find is if you switch off and follow them for two k, and don't look up, don't look at the watch, don't look at anything, just follow them to the next corner, follow them to the next. You will eventually find this new level. Your heart rate will kind of relax. You'll you'll zen yourself out a small bit, believe it or not, and then keep going. So whether you're running with someone or not find the ones around you who you know you've seen a few times now and you're just going to latch on and, and stick with that. Deadly. Uh, tip number three is plan the night before. So it's plan your day the night before. You need your marathon bag. So they have a specific marathon bag. If I remember correctly, a clear bag with your number on it. Uh, and have this stuff in there for your stuff after the race. Organize your race clothes and your number the night before. Uh, pack a hoodie, potentially a change of clothes for afterwards. Um, I'm not too sure if I believe this anymore, but there was a time for recovery for like pr- compression clothing for after race. I think that could be a bit overkill personally. But one thing I have here is uh, don't forget the Vaseline. Because I do remember my second year doing it, you weren't doing it. I was like, I forgot the Vaseline. Because uh, not only for, for chafing for the inner ties and nipples, but I don't use it too much for that. More so for the eyebrows. Because I find with the sweat, if you have the Vaseline over the eyebrows, you're, it just it stops all the sweat and stuff coming into your eyes. So that's something I definitely need for, for this year. Um, and also when we did this in 2017, 18 and 19, it was, it was cold the very start, but it was like an unusually warm day after that then. Uh, like it's been, I know we've had thunderstorms and everything this week, but it has been like 16, 17 degrees, 17 yeah. degrees outside. So it, it could be a, a warm day on Sunday. And the end of it, I want your thoughts on as well is hydration, maybe the diorolite or something at the end of the race. Would you recommend something like that as well? Or just something to have in that race bag for, for at the end of it. And the last thing before your thoughts is plan where you meet up with your your friends and family stuff afterwards because when the race finishes you've got to do that big circle around Marion Square again before meeting up with friends and family they can't just meet you at the end of the race like like most races just the way that goes if it's your first time doing it yeah um uh top tip uh bring bring a black bag or two wear mm-hmm. a black bag to the race and uh, one the plastic it'll re- uh, reflect the heat back onto you um poncho any anything that will weirdly just keep the heat on you because you have to dump everything at the start line um, we usually do the donation jumpers um, but it, I don't know I didn't see anything about it this year but I'm going to black bag myself so basically we showed up in our jumper we leave it over the rail and they collect all the jumpers and donate it to charity I don't know if they're doing it um, so I've planned I've planned black bag this year I've planned <laughs> double bagging myself um, but it's uh, that is that is the plan for me for staying warm Um on the, the the start line at the end the aura lights uh, absolutely if you have an isotonic there will be lucas there it's, mm-hmm. it's you probably want again there is salt tablets like a salt stick take take a salt stick tablet with water and and you're getting in exactly what you need like the aura light and i i actually think there's a shortage of the aura light in the country over the last little while really but, yeah there has been for a while when we were like doing the cycle we actually couldn't get it anywhere oh um, yeah, yeah. I think after all the illnesses and COVIDs and stuff, it was just one of these um, delays, I, I believe. But salt sticks, mediums, whatever you have, the high five tablets, drop it into a pint of water and just get it into you. And, and, and that's pretty much what starts you on the recovery process. Yeah, I actually, I, I never hear, hear about the jumper thing beforehand, but it seems to be there every year. Um, and yeah, I try to jump stuff at, at, at the side because you see literally thousands of, of 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 jumpers and stuff there just to and and and, and hats and stuff. Um, and like I donated afterwards. The first year I didn't know that and I turned up in a t-shirt. And I was freezing. I'm like, where are these yeah. guys running the jumpers for? And um, number four is to keep it simple. And um, it, it's pretty much kind of stuff we talked about the other day. Uh, with you know, don't do anything too radical with your food if you haven't. Like you talked about this on um at the start of the week in the podcast. If you're not used to eating certain types of food, even though it may be a lot of carbs, maybe not just jump straight onto that bandwagon and now and have a gradual increase in the last couple of days of your nutrition. Um, and don't eat something you normally wouldn't eat the night before or morning of, of a race. Um, kind of stick to what you've been doing before on, on, on your long runs. 
Uh, there's no point in trying something drastic that might you think might help get like a 1% different in the race if it could sacrifice your weight race and make it a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Um, and we, we we fairly dealt in. If you need more tips and tricks on foods and carbs and stuff, have a listen to the last episode. Yeah. Uh, number five is get a warm up before the race. Um, doesn't have to be anything mad. I mean, a couple of quick stretches, you know, a few light squats, lunges, slight little r- runs and stuff just to get the heart rate going rather than going from the start. That doesn't mean do you know, 20, 30 jumper jacks because that's going to kill your glycogen ju- scores before you even begin. Um yeah, I, I like doing a small little warm just keep the body moving, some some slight, a couple of reverse lunges, single leg RDLs, that kind of thing. But like you're talking about three to five each side, you don't have to go too bad in that. Um, my, um, my little tip is, and, and we didn't do it, there tends to be a little bit of distance between bag drop and start point. Yes. If you time it right, don't be afraid to take a little jog slash stretch slash jog all the way to the start point you'll be lightly warm in your bin bag. Mm. You'll have started to kind of process and then just maintain the stretch and the flexibility, the couple of squats. Um, because again, you'll get the, the gun fright, you know, when it, when the race starts, the adrenaline spikes, whether you like it or not, you, everyone's running and it's the fight or flight kicks in. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're just a sheep running with everybody. <laughs> you know, like it's just terrifying. But um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to add in a jog. Like a lot of people are like, oh, don't jog. I need every 100 meters which is true but you know you've 100 meters is actually it'll probably benefit you quicker over the first 2 3k that will benefit you in a later on in the race as well I know a lot of people that will get the Lewis in and from the Lewis will jog down to Marion Square as part of the warm up like yeah because you're not going on the same pace you are in the race itself so there's no harm in no. a very light jog uh, at, the ve- at the very end I mentioned stuff about jumpers and stuff there we talked about already but also wear a t-shirt in the day um, even though it might be very cold that morning, you know, you, you turn up even with a long sleeve technical tee, uh, you are going to be very hot as that race progresses. So think about how long you're going to be out there, T-shirt or, or running tank top, whatever it is from, from there. But don't be fooled by how cold it is at the start or might be cold at the start to, to wear anything heavier than that. Um, number six is set a goal, but be cautiously op- optimistic. Maybe have a backup goal in mind because it mightn't be your day. There's no point in worrying about things like the weather and stuff like that, which could affect your race times and all the rest. So, um, you know, it, it could be just a miserable Sunday. And that time you had, for example, my time is sub 3.30. It just mightn't happen in the day. We are going uphill against all the rain and the wind and everything else. So have a goal in mind. Pace yourself. Enjoy the event. If it's your first marathon, just focus on finishing it. Um, maybe a goal and a, and a backup plan as well. And not uh, just like, yeah. For me, for me on that one, I have my goal, uh, yep. four hours, so four hours, hopefully. But no matter what happens, if, if I'm pulled out of the race in an ambulance, fair. Mm. But 4.15 will not be passed. I don't care what I have to do. If I have to walk 100 metres, run 100, 4.15 is the cutoff for me, and I will right. get there. Uh, and that's... And you need that as well, for, yeah, for, especially because yeah. it's not your first one. If it was your first one, I'd say, hang on, just you know, pull, just enjoy the yeah. first thing, whatever happens. The fact you know what your body needs to do to get four fifteen or, or, or four hours, and um, sometimes you need that that extra little kick up the backside yeah. and be like, look, let's you know when you're struggling, let's let's take it up a notch. Um, and like just to, just for example, like if, if I hold a five thirty, um, that should set me up for a three hour fifty. Yeah, uh, so true. 30k will be around at 250, 245, a little bit less than that. So we have an hour and a half to do 12k. Do you know, like when you That's, set up yeah. that, that quarter pass, or his quarter past four, it's the 415. Um, like an hour and a half to cross that uh, on a hike is average, you know, like it's so when you've been training for running and okay, if everything goes bad. At least, you know, like if I walk for 500 and run for 500, it's a seven minute K, I will get there. Well, so. you, you talked about taking off too fast. That's exactly what I did last year. It's funny you should say the 12K and and, and the, the hour and a half. Um, the first 30K took me two hours and 30 minutes last year in the Thoroughbred Martin. And then I, I was told it's all downhill from here and it was 2K of uphill. And the, body, the brain was just broken when I realized your man lied to me because I didn't know the route, which happens to be number seven, know the route. But um it actually took me an hour and 25 minutes to the last 12k because my body was a bit because it went too fast at the start i'm sure that pops up somewhere here as well but it's 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 yeah I mean, and that kind of proves the point it kind of proves the point no matter what you're crossing the line yes it took an hour and 25 so 
And then when the time is getting closer, then the 500 turns to just hang on, you little... Just, I, I get angry at myself. So I'd be like, hang on, you little dickhead. And just <laughs> run 700 meters. Um, I get very aggressive with myself. But you need that little bit of aggression, though. Yes, uh, agreed. You need that little bit of aggression. If you're very soft on yourself, then you'll... Yeah, you'll like, ah, don't up. worry about it. It's grand. Yeah. So... Um, I think by by that then your your goal at the moment because you're setting out that five thirty pace would be the hit near three fifty recognizing that it's really going to be a little bit longer as the race progresses. Yeah, well, my my goal is to cross thirty k at that pace. At that pace. After that, everyone knows it only starts then. So yes, an extra ten minutes onto that time would put me in on the four hour. I, I would hope. I would hope if it's low as a four forty five, we we might we might hit the the four hours. Unreal. Uh, number seven, as I just mentioned a second ago, is know the route of the race. Know where those hills are coming. Know when you're having an idea when the water stops are coming, especially the the, the fair few for the Lucas Aids and all the rest. Um, they'll be on your race pack you get this weekend, so there's no point in listing off random numbers now. Um, the hill that comes, I suppose, Chapter Lizard at mile 10, that's the one we've talked about before in this podcast, and then the one that has a big sign of the wall at the Lucas Aid, which me and you both think is not as bad as it's made out to be. I suppose if you've got new trips no. around that stage and haven't hit the wall, something might happen then, but it seems to be a lot more kind of uh, marketing. No, for me, it's for sticky me, road where the Lucas Aid is where we're going yeah, through that stage. The, the, the bit for me is actually at UCD. From UCD, there's no real hills. You just, every road looks the fucking same. And you're just like, how close am I? Oh, I still have this much to do. Is this the final street? Is this the final street? And then the crowds start building. And then you're like, yeah. you're, still, you're still 3K away. It's like, Jesus, what are these people doing standing here? To me, that's the hardest part. <laughs> do you think so? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love like, that. I take I, it in. No, I do. Yeah. I enjoy it. But equally, I can't stop because all these people are watching me. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just, it's long. It's it's a long stretch mm. in. And you think every corner you turn around, like, is this it? This is it, yeah. Is this it? Is this it? I think it's two miles that that stretch from the uh, Vincent's Tesco kind of area. And that, that yeah. turn left straight down there. I think it's 24 to, to 26.2 there. Yeah. And it is yeah. kind of like, is this? But you, like two miles, like, oh, yeah, no bother. But that, that could be 16 to 20 minutes. Like, you know, it yeah. depends on what patient yeah. going at that stage. It's a long, it's Two a miles long seems way. nothing, but the, yeah. but the time and stuff is a, is a lot more. Um, number eight is pacing. Um, so I know we talk, this kind of coincide with number seven is not a roof, but like the first three, four K of Dublin Martin is a lot of it's uphill because you're heading up Christ Kirk Cathedral, you're heading up towards Cast Knock and it's sneaky uphills and stuff as well. Like I remember the first year we were doing it and I got ahead of myself because I'm like, oh, we first marathon, I'm going to get under four. I did not get under four. Uh, but you're like, pull back the pace because you can get lost in the crowd so easily because you've got so much adrenaline flowing because, you know, you, you've had all this training and stuff and it's about to pay off on this day, especially if it's a good day uh, and you just get lost in the crowds Um so just pull back your pace and try and stick to yourself. I know I haven't wrote this in the top 10, but um, just because it's something that's crossed my mind a lot lately with different races that I've done is don't constantly look at the watch, have an idea, and maybe not look at it again for another kilometer or so or a good bit down the road. So you're not constantly looking at the pace and seeing it going up and down five and 10 seconds with every you know, 20, 30 feet you take because that can just start wrecking with your head. So try and settle into a pace from there. Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, very quickly settle into your race pace because very quickly your body will go right this is it and then <laughs> it's very hard to speed up from it and sometimes it's very hard to slow down from it because your body will just be in that rhythm gait mm. everything it'll just do it so uh have the courage to settle uh, i suppose if you find your heart rate rising and you're at your race pace don't worry slow down 20 seconds a kilometer do it for 2k relax and you might just get your second wind and then okay. increase back. You've lost 40 seconds. That's Which it. Is nothing over Martin. Nothing over Martin. Yeah. It is nothing. It's a sprint finish. You know, if you if you if you have the courage to to take the last K at a 40 seconds quicker. Um, so yeah, it's you know, it, it's a good way to kind of control everything, you know, because sometimes you see the heart rate rise and you're like, oh no, I'm only 10k in. Bring it back, just slow down, 1k, give yourself a chance. The next downhill, oh, heart rate's back down at 140. Okay, I can go with the 530 again. Let's see how we go. And yeah. that would be the best way to use your watch and your pace and everything else. Yeah, right, 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 all the time. Um, number nine, positive mindset. Uh, just like we talked about this earlier, whether it's getting tickets yourself or not, it's just 
you will finish this race one way or another. Just kind of visualize yourself getting through that 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 final third of the race when we've already alluded to it really starts to, the race really begins around that 30, 32 kilometer part where you're like, okay, now we got to grind out these last 10 K one way or another. And just, you know, the crowds do get bigger near the end. And and you said there that they, they have to just keep pushing. It's like, I can't stop here. I just got to keep going, keep going. And, and it sounds mad to think, but once you're in the middle of it and you, you see the crowds and they're going like one line deep and two line, then three line and four line deep, it's pushing against the end. That crowd and that energy can can carry you through uh, as mad as it is to say that right now over a podcast. But when you're in it and you experience it, it's a completely different ballgame. Yeah, no, it's big. It's uh, it's very impressive. And, and part of the fun of the last couple of hundred meters is trying to spot your friends in the crowd. <laughs> um, it's, it is part of the fun. And, and, and just keep that ear out. I know some people are so tired they can't even hear anything but uh, keep your ear out because you'll hear your name being screamed particularly if it's on your name badge get used to that feeling of randomers going go on Sean yeah. and you're like <laughs> okay who's that lad I'm going to do it for him <laughs> yeah no it's really good it is good enjoy that experience that little run in is good yeah, but I- on, on, on the finishing when you cross the finish line don't be ashamed of a tear or two Oh, definitely not. You, you, you've done something. I read something today, actually. It's like less than 1% of the planet's population have done a marathon. Yeah, and we've so done a group. That means we are stupid. So, um, <laughs> the, the, yeah. No, but it, it, in terms of the amount of mental battles you're going to go through over the two, three, four, five, six hours, whatever it is, whatever you're poison, um, when you cross the finish line, it's like the battle has stopped and... You, you will find yourself no matter well it's probably where enough me and you a little bit but I remember the first one because it was hell and when I crossed yeah. that finish line I, I had nothing left and all I wanted to do was cry yeah. <laughs> and someone put a medal on me and I was just like thank you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was in a, like that kind of way now after the third one when I eventually because it was, it was a long process to finally get under the four hours uh, yeah. For me, was was like that. That was it. I was never doing America, never again. And somehow yeah. we're doing this podcast a couple of years later. I was like, "Who? Who? Yeah. Take a minute on this one now. That it's been a long time. Call it, call it emotion. Call it a runner's high. Uh, I would more so call it pride. It, mm. It's it is the fruits that you've sown <laughs> four weeks ago, uh, 16, 20 weeks ago. Uh, for you, it's been a longer, longer time with all the long distances. So. Mm. Like it, it is the achievement. It is, and it's single handedly. It's a solo sport. No one else could do it for you. You had to do it, and it is one of those moments. And that's why straight after a marathon, uh, marathon organizers always try and get you to buy the ticket for next year. Oh um, yeah, the text comes because in better. you walk away with that feeling of my God, I've done something great today. And and top tip, enjoy it. Don't mm-hmm. rush to the family. Don't go straight onto the phone. Just just think about what you've done. Have a look back at the time. Watch a few more people cross the line and enjoy that. Don't be in a hurry out of the metal zone. I know they'll keep pushing you on. Dude, just kind yeah. of take, I'm not saying take four hours, take two minutes, have a look at the clock, enjoy it, and just slowly make your way back to the bag and have a think about what you did. Um, number 10 is pretty much what you said, summarized a lot better than what I wrote down on text, was just the end of the race. They're going to keep you moving on, that there's a long walk to the bag drop afterwards. There's not much you can do about that. But it is time just to, to, to fuel up a bit, get some fluids on board. You get that race bag at the end. You get a race bag at the very end. No, Luke saying stuff is handy here from there, I think. Is it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You get, I think you get so. Goodies. Yeah, you do get goodies at the end. Good, yeah. goodies stuff with the matter. It's either, no, sorry. I, I think you have your bag, but you get handed goodies and goodies and goodies as you walk out. Okay, um, and that, that's when and you get the, the stuff. Yeah, yeah. so just... Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. It has years. been three years, guys. It has been three yeah. years. Um, but just you know, take it all in. Then you know, you have your change of clothes, stuff the bag drop, um, and then like we said earlier, if you're meeting up with people afterwards, maybe have a meeting point or something there because um, you know, it's it's gonna be hard to find people through the crowds. So or something like twenty five thousand people signed up anyway to do it this year. So which probably means twenty twenty one thousand a day. Um. Yeah, I've nothing else to add. They're, they're, they're top 10 tips. I'm actually kind of proud of myself for what I wrote back in back three years ago. The only difference really, uh, we had a few slight little disagreements. It's always cool. You always kind of evolve in the races. You always learn something new in the races. Um, the watch is a big thing for me now. It's just not constantly be be looking at that pace and trying to change your pace every 20, 30 seconds to that. Um, apart from that, I, I'm, I'm trying to think back over my last couple of marathons, anything that changed. Well, I've made a mistake by going out too fast before. We'll see what happens this year. 
Yeah, just another way to think about it, Sean, as I think about it. And the beep should come as a surprise. So as you click through yeah. a kilometer, the beep should go, oh, and then look down and make an assessment. Yes, and agreed. Then, and then that one. Um, sometimes when you're actually enjoying the chat, you'll actually miss a beep. And then the next beep will catch up by surprise. And like, oh, I missed the kilometer there. We're through, through another yeah. two, you know, like, and um, yeah, don't, don't, that, that's the best way to see it. Just make that assessment. Uh, don't change a plan halfway through the race. Mm. Unless you're through 35K and you're like, I'm feeling good. Then you're going to knock your five minutes off. You're not going to change the world at that point, but don't decide a 10 K I'm feeling good. And let's try and run 15 minutes quicker than I had planned. Stick to your plan. You know, you best you've set that plan. We always say you're capable of more than you have planned for. Yeah. And um, which is probably true, but you have set the bar for yourself and that's the bar you go at until someone pushes you the next time, because that's your comfort level um, and got to stick, stick where you're comfortable for it. Especially if it's your first one. Um, I'd expect you to be very uncomfortable on this one, Sean. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm going to be extremely uncomfortable. But yeah, it's uh, it it is something that changing plans on the day is just probably not a good idea. No, unless no. you, as I said, through the thirty kilometers, through the thirty five, and you're like, Do you know what? I could probably knock thirty seconds a kilometer off this, and then you just guarantee your sub whatever you're aiming for. Yeah, I, I I don't know if I'll ever run a negative mark because I'll always take off too fast and try to pull myself back from there. And um, the last thing on this would probably, as being a little bit hypocritical, if you're listening to this, looking for tips to form a marathon, is uh, stop. As in, like, don't spend Friday, Saturday, all day then looking up these last minute tips and stuff. Pretty much what you said, Derek, there. Um, you know, have your bit, different bits of information, all the rest, but then just settle in. That's your plan. Everything else from there is just trying to overthink it and just. You know, it'd be probably a long day Saturday before the race day and the Sunday, and then just take it all in afterwards and just even during the race, just just enjoy it because you know it's it's hard to even make it to the start line. I know there's some people there that have been training, building up to now, and they've gotten injured in the last couple of weeks and they can't make it to the start point. And it sounds cheesy to say that you know you've made it to the starting line for the race, but you know, take it in. It's a pretty cool achievement. You make it there, and it's even better achievement when you finish the race. So uh, and enjoy those few scoops after because I know I will. Yeah, it's absolutely. We'll be in toners. Probably some will get there an hour ahead of me, but you better save me a seat. <laughs> uh, on, on that, Bob, shall unless you got anything else to add this, to this bonus episode, I suppose, of the Any Given Monday podcast? No, that's me, Shawnee. We'll that's chat it. again next week and we'll find out what happened. Uh, best of luck guys we'll have a podcast dropping on Tuesday because there will be zero point to myself and Eric trying to record a podcast on Sunday there might be zero point trying to record one on Monday so it could be a pretty hungover podcast but we're going to attempt to do it that way and talk about how we got on in Double Mark best of luck to you anyone listening to Double Mark as well and that's it for myself and Eric take care bye